When you see them laughing at you, do not be offended. For your own safety, stay clear of participating in any protests during your stay in the Philippines. Driving in Manila feels like Darwin's survival of the fittest. It's also important to note that Filipinos are quite indirect and will avoid giving an outright no at all costs. And not every Filipino can speak this language fluently. Hey, it's Mirabiti! I'm your local tour guide who introduces you to Filipino culture. So if you like to learn more about the Philippines, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so you'll be the first one to be notified to my next video. Today, I made a list of the 10 things that you shouldn't do in the Philippines from a Filipino perspective. This video is going to be helpful for those of you who plan on coming to the Philippines because it can help you mitigate the culture shock and the misunderstanding in terms of communication due to the culture differences. Without further ado, let's get into the first one. When you see people look at you all the time wherever you go, do not be offended. When you see them laughing at you, do not be offended. It doesn't mean that they are making fun of you. In fact, they think you are amazing and cool. Most of the time, they were thinking, what is he doing here? What is she doing here? Why is there a beautiful person wandering around this small town? Especially when you try to do the things that Filipinos do, like ride a tricycle or a jeepney. Trust me, they look and laugh because it amazes them and they think you are cool and cute to want to get to experience the Filipino culture. It makes them feel proud of their culture. Filipinos are very friendly, but they are very shy at the same time. If you approach a group of people, they would usually laugh and point at each other as to who's gonna speak to you. And if you mispronounce a Filipino word or a name of a place in the Philippines, they would try their best to understand what you are saying. And once they finally figured it out, the normal reaction would be they're gonna laugh. But do not be offended because laughing at somebody's embarrassing embarrassment in the Philippines is a way of helping make the situation light. So yeah, don't take it personally. Our sense of humor might not always fit yours. And as opposed to dry humor, Filipinos usually enjoy a more slapstick, situational, silly kind of humor. So in circumstance where a local imitates your accent, for example, and proceeds to laugh. This isn't a form of mockery, but simply a good-natured joke expressing amusement <laughs> over something different. It might be annoying to some, but just remember, if ever, it's hardly done out of spite. When entering a house in the Philippines, it is rude to keep on your shoes. Just like in most Asian countries, it is normal to remove shoes and socks. You are expected to do so unless you are told otherwise. Taking your shoes off before entering a house is actually a sign of respect. And we find it very unhygienic walking with our shoes inside our homes. I think that's the biggest reason why. Because Filipinos clean their floors every single day, every time they feel the floor dusty and dirty, they would always sweep the dirt off. Just imagine what kind of dirt do you step on with your shoes when you walk in the streets in the Philippines. But some people use slippers that are never used outside and that is okay. But most of Filipinos walk inside their house barefoot. I'm one of those because I know the floor is clean as I mop it every single day with soap. So yeah, I can even lick it. It's that clean. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Instead of sharing the road, driving in Manila feels like Darwin's survival of the fittest. Not only is it a challenge maneuvering through the metro's complicated routes, but the difficulty has also upped a level by having to compete with the jeepneys that pull over without warning and the huge buses that swerve carelessly, expecting other motorists to automatically give way. The extreme road congestion and ceaseless rush hour traffic don't help much either. So Unless you absolutely must, you'll be best off leaving the driving to your grab driver. Sure, the Philippines is a much cheaper country than the US or many of those in Europe. But don't assume you're being cheated just because you're being charged a bit more than what you hope for. I just want to remind you that there are things that are more expensive here than you thought, like cars, gadgets, 
like smartphones and computers, branded shoes, and also Philippines has one of the highest corporate tax rates in Southeast Asia, which can be one of the major factors why foreign investors prefer do business elsewhere instead of the Philippines. Yeah, don't arrive on time, at least to casual gatherings. Filipinos are notorious for adhering to something called Filipino time. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Which refers to anywhere from a 15 minute to an hour long delay on the clock. So Filipino events will almost always start at least a few minutes late. Many are trying to get rid of this stereotype. Formal gatherings are much more likely to begin on schedule. But don't be surprised when your Filipino friends are only leaving their homes by the time you've gotten to your meeting place. Many of you experience this on your date or meeting a girl you met online. Some of you stood them up because you are not willing to tolerate this kind of behavior, right? Although important meetings and important events begin on schedule. Filipino time just really applies usually on casual gatherings. Oh, and yeah, Tinder meetings. Okay, yeah, Filipinos are very non-confrontational. I've mentioned this a lot in my previous vlogs already and are rather timid when it comes to people they've just met. So should a problem arise, try not to lose your temper and remain calm and pleasant. When meeting locals, be friendly, but avoid being foggy or intrusive. It's also important to note that Filipinos are quite indirect and will avoid giving an outright no at all costs as they fear it could come to it could come off offensive. I know this might be a bit frustrating to foreigners especially when trying to set up gathering or extending an invitation but the Filipino way of saying no can come in the form of phrases like um, we'll see or mm, I'm not sure or I'll try to make it but but if they say yes I can come I can attend there's no problem you can trust them with that if you're surprised by the number of Filipinos who can express themselves smoothly and confidently in English you shouldn't be surprised after all the Philippines was colonized by the US for almost 50 years, resulting in the English language being widely taught in schools around the country. That said, you shouldn't expect everyone to speak flawless English anywhere you go. While English may be the dominant language used for business, it's still not the mother tongue and not every Filipino can speak this language fluently. You'll probably encounter more people who are having a hard time expressing themselves or explaining things to you. But don't worry, most Filipinos will try to help you find your way even if they can hardly understand your accent or even if they can barely speak English. To be fair, neglecting to check the weather of the destination you're traveling to is a common travel mistake. Now, one of the biggest mistakes travelers make is that they assume that the entire country has the same weather. They couldn't be more wrong. Yes, in most areas, December to May is generally dry and sunny, but that's not true in certain popular destinations like Shargao or Sagada. Certain areas also have severe wet seasons that typically peak from July to September while other areas are dry during those times. The fact that the weather is not a one-size-fits-all deal is all the reason to keep tabs on how the weather will be when you arrive. It's not unusual for the weather to change multiple times in a day. It can be sunny in the morning but pouring in the afternoon. For your own safety, stay clear of participating in any protests during your stay in the Philippines. There was a press release, the Bureau of Immigration states that all foreign nationals are prohibited from participating in political rallies and mass demonstrations in the country. So taking part in a political assembly or gathering, be it for or against the government, will be considered as meddling in our internal affairs as sovereign nation. So we caution against joining any protest in the country or you risk getting blacklisted or deported. So you have to keep in mind that Philippines is not the paradise you were hoping for. At least half of it. 
half of it is true, it's a paradise, but there are so much more that our government and our people has to improve. But I think that is the beauty of the world. The differences that we have makes the experience amazing. When you travel to the Philippines, don't get too shocked when you see how the traffic and transport system is or when the weather is just so fluctuated or if there is so much trash and it is not as clean as America or Thailand or Korea. Philippines is still a developing country and that's why I'm making you the videos to raise awareness and to help visitors understand why it is the way it is in the Philippines. Just travel with an open mind and a warm heart and you'll have the best travel experience when you come to the Philippines. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the 10 things you shouldn't do in the Philippines. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to share this video to your friends. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!